All right, welcome back. We are starting day one of the NaNoWriMo 2019 adventure. Um, I have a couple of Scrivener documents open right now. I've got my main NaNoWriMo 2019 document that I'm working on, and then I've got my story general or planning general uh, currently under planning of story open as well. And I've made a little some modifications to my draft here, but um, we're going to be using both as we go. Probably not the planning document as much just because I haven't really put a lot of time into it yet. Um, typically, I, I would do this prior to doing a full-fledged non-speed uh, versioned uh, story. Uh, but I just I want to make a couple quick notes here. Um, NaNoWriMo is a fast process with uh, not a lot of time to breathe. Uh, I'm not going to probably do a lot of editing to these videos, so I just want to see that right, right. If there's a lot of ums and, and tongue clicks and things, it just, you know, it is what it is. I, normally I would take the time to edit that stuff out, but um, if I'm going to actually do a series that's every day on this with potential to run half hour longer each day, uh, I want to just get it done. So I uh, probably won't be doing a lot of editing other than just anything major that really shouldn't be in the um, in the draft. But um, anyway, I hope you enjoy this as I go. We're going to hopefully do all 30 days. The only reason why we wouldn't is if no one's watching. Because um, I don't want to do a lot of recording and a lot of talking while I write if no one's going to end up watching this. So I'm going to be watching YouTube periodically for the first seven days or so to see if anyone's watching. And if yes, if you all give me thumbs up and stuff as we go, I'll keep doing this. If it looks like I'm getting no response or no um, views at all, then we'll probably just do up to day seven and then the rest I'll probably do off camera, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I do hope this is a fun journey nonetheless. Uh, I did update my NaNoWriMo document, so um, I have my quick and dirty story information filled in. I don't yet have my structure or theme notes yet because I figure I'll fill that in as I go, but I do have an official title for our document today. It's called Washed Up a Pirate Adventure. Uh, this may end up becoming a pirate thriller at some point, just because I, again, have two genre types. Um, I think the story is going to more likely be a thriller than an adventure, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So, um, quick synopsis. In the mid-18th century on the South Caribbean island of Curacao, uh, uh, a washed-up actor is forced to return home after he and his fellow actors upset the crowds with their badly acted play. After having trouble securing his passage on this companion's travel vessel, he manages to stow away on a luxury liner that is headed for what will one day become the Mid-Atlantic States. On the way, pirates attack the ship and sink it. Fortunately, our hero and a handful of survivors manage to escape, braving the turbulent waters to reach the nearest island where they must now survive until help arrives. But the pirates are not yet done hunting for survivors or enslaving them, and the actor and his fellow survivors must stay out of sight and ahead one step of uh, the stalking pirates to stay alive and free follows as a tale of survival betrayal and want to romance fear and other 18th century problems this may change slightly as we go on i don't know yet but this is my essential goal for the story and then um i've got some of my notes here i'm going to keep it for myself you can freeze frame the video if you want to read more about it but i do want to get going on the story itself um but yeah here's a list of everything i've written down so far through my story and character notes and then my research notes at the bottom are down here um, again, feel free to freeze frame the video if you want to read that. Um, otherwise, we'll get started. Um, I started my journal already earlier, uh, just to kind of take note of the fact that I am going into this with very little research. Um, this is a work in progress. This is a kind of a concept draft. I want to just note that anything you see on the video today or in the next few days, it's not guaranteed that that'll be the final version or even represent the final version of the story that I hope to produce sometime in the next year or two. Um, I do want to say that I've got a lot of the story already mapped up and mapped out in my head, so I won't be having a formal outline for this particular story. Uh, everything will be pretty general, and I'm just going to be writing um, primarily pants method because that's typically how I write. Um, but, uh, you know, it would be a little bit of planning here and there, but I do plan to flesh out both this document and the uh, more detailed document as I go. So if there's anything major, I'll let you guys know. Otherwise, we're just going to write. So I hope, uh, hope you're all with me on that. So today our uh, target word count is going to be 2,000 words. Um, it's currently just about 4.30 on a Friday, November 1st, 2019. Um, I will try to timestamp my videos uh, each day just so you kind of get a sense of where we are. 
Um, 2,000 words is probably going to be realistic just because, again, I already know principally what I want to do in the first couple of scenes. Uh, I may start slowing down a bit <coughs> excuse me, as the days go on. Um, anyway, all right, enough talking. Let's start uh, walking. All right, so uh, I don't think I want to put any chapter titles right now just because I don't want to mess up the word count. I want to just get to the raw part, so we'll just do my scene. So I think our, uh, let me actually, you know what, before we get going, I just want to quickly show you who our character is that we're working with. So let's go into this character, is Jack Halgren. Uh, again, I have barely anything filled out here. Um, but he is our main character, Jack Halgren. He's the protagonist, he's dynamic, he's going to change. So tip goes on, his hero, or his archetype is a hero. So his name is John Halgren, his nickname is Ham. I don't know if I'll be using that nickname or not, uh, but that's just, you know, his actor nickname. And then legal name probably won't come up at all in the story. Uh, but it's there in case you need it. The main thing here is uh, his hometown is the Carolinas. Uh, it's actually 18th century, not 17th. I, um, I filled this out on another video that I ended up deciding not upload to upload because just because I didn't think it was particularly interesting and I wouldn't watch it if I uploaded it. So I don't know why you guys would either. So I'm leaving that one on my hard drive for now. But um, anyway, I wrote some of this stuff on that video. Uh, we planned it out. But just kind of give you guys an overview of who he is. He's 23, 5 foot 7. He's basically the same size as Tom Cruise, but the same weight, 160. Body condition, including voice and scent. So Jack is fairly skinny, but has a deep actor's voice. He smells like rose petals because he's an actor, and actors must smell like rose petals. Makes the kissing scenes better. Um, his characteristics include uh, he is well-spoken and typically walks with his back straight unless the script calls for something different. He has tight control over his actions. His physical trademark is his golden goatee, which he has to work extra hard to I'm glad I read that, so I forgot about that detail. So he has a gold T. Basically, it looks like uh, Carrie Always a little bit. Um, if Carrie Always was uh, back doing Robin Hood. Uh, flaws. He is insecure because he thinks everyone is watching, even when he doesn't want them to. Having worked on the, stra on the, stra on the stage since he was 15 has made it difficult for him to blend in with his surroundings, especially when people recognize him from the stage. His goal, if applicable, is he must overcome his physical weakness to defeat a more powerful villain who is trying to catch or kill him. I say catch or kill because, uh, you know what, we'll make it a surprise when we get there. Um, that's all I've really filled out. I haven't done much here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have an emotional description. Okay. He, uh, he acts to dominate the room. He reacts to people who try to upstage him. He's ambivalent to commoners, even though he's essentially a commoner himself. We'll get more into that in a bit here. His temperament is to panic at the slightest discomfort, which is going to make things really, really sucky when he gets stranded on an island later. Common mood. Uh, calm on the stage, anxious off the stage. In other words, he's an actor. Um, flaws. Doesn't trust people's opinion of him, like an actor. Change goal of applicable to react more slowly and remain calm on all occasions. Um, and then he... Um, I don't have any additional notes yet. I guess I'll get there. I think that's all I filled out. Yeah. Um... Oh, for his financial, I haven't filled this in, but he's basically, he's a gambler. That's what I think I would determine off camera. And so that's kind of where we're going to begin, is he's going to be losing a lot of money when he shouldn't be. So he he's not particularly wealthy to begin with. Um, the other thing I wanted to establish is that he's going to be one of only a couple of Americans on the on the stage. Um, he's going to be in a troupe with a bunch of British actors, so they're going to be using British theater uh elements um i don't know yet how that's gonna all look we'll just when we write it we'll figure it out um but i wanted to point all that out anyway so let's go ahead and get started here um and we'll see where this goes um i'll be filming the entire session it won't be uh probably straight on through i'll probably clip this in different parts uh so um that uh, I may end up taking up a good chunk of the evening on this but probably not all at once so if you see uh cuts and things i'll um I'll stamp them as I go, uh, if I think about it. So, all right, let's begin. Uh, just a quick reminder, also, um, you can keep track of my word count down here in the bottom. Uh, 167, or 1667, that is our target uh, for hitting 50,000 words. Uh, this is what you need to do each day in order to get there. Um, my goal for today is actually 2,000, but you can watch the progress meter fill up down here as well. So, And then I've got a target board here, uh, which we can also look at. So just letting you all know, this is um, 
actually tracking my my um all this up here so don't worry about all that um i don't think i actually ever closed this document so the session target is probably going to be inaccurate so i'm not worried about it i think uh it tracks whether or not you close the document all right so we're going to begin i think in a gambling den is that a good place i think so all right so we need a hook for the first line Typically, if we want to just race it out, we don't need to worry about all that interesting stuff initially, but we should still try to keep it kind of interesting so we have less to fix later. Um, so, let's see. If Jack Halgren... Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. There's one more thing I wanted to do. I didn't actually want Courier. I wanted... Um, I have a new font that I want to try for this. It's called Tippy Tappy. It's right next to Times New Roman. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep this or not. Yeah. I kind of like this kind of older uh, typewriter style. So we'll see how that goes. So if Jack... Yeah, I kind of like that. Alright, if Jack Halgren um, had any better place to be than a gambling den he would undoubtedly be there instead but this was carousel and the only other notable place on uh, the, uh, the island was one of the many beaches it offered, and it was frankly too, oops, so frankly too hot for that today. So, the gambling den, it was terrible start. Yes. Um, so actually, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Let's see, he... Uh, let's see, blah, 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 blah. The den was unusual for a den, but maybe it was quite normal for a Caribbean, let's see, for a South Caribbean den. He didn't really know because this was his first day in the South Caribbean. Um, let's see, do, 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 do. Perhaps tomorrow he would have a better idea just how normal of a den it is. Maybe after some research, including inter ah, interviews with the natives, or if he was desperate, their slaves. Now, that's something I've learned in my research is that uh, the in the in the uh, 18th century they still had slaves uh the just like they did everywhere so uh, just kind of i'll probably clarify that in some way in, in the rewrite but i just wanted to emphasize it that is one of our demographics on this island at that time um do, 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 do. Let's see do, do, do. um But, if 
for now. He was here and he was going to make the most of it, whatever the most might be. Um, there weren't many people inside the den tonight. Um, just a dozen plus their various servants. Let's see, a dozen who just a dozen gambler or say well dressed gamblers. Yeah, we'll probably update that later. There were many people inside the den, not just a dozen well dressed gamblers plus the various servants. Um but there were enough to remind Jack that nobody around here believed in taking a bath. Um, some clearly had visited the ocean earlier as a smell of Let's see, seaweed, let's say fish and seaweed, uh, remained pungent. Okay, it's all pungent. It's pungent on their clothing. But Jack, let's see. Um, a native of the, I don't know if these are actually called these, native of the Outer Banks <coughs> in the American Carolinas. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I probably have to research if they were always called that. Um, we'll get there. A Jack native of the Outer Banks in the American Carolinas. Um... was fully aware of how often people who lived along coastlines bathe in the ocean. Someday somebody would have to invent running fresh water perhaps via a pipe underground, but um, such a future did not yet exist in the mid 18th oops, century. So sitting in a tub full of other people's bath water would have to do and it often didn't do so the ocean it was Jack was used to the smell by now but he didn't like it. It still managed to surprise him every time he turned his head and attempted to, um, what would be a good term for trash talk? Attempted to, we'll just say trash talk will come up with a better term later. We'll do TK here. TK trash talk. His opponents um, as taking in a whiff of them reminded him 
that there was never really a time to get used to the smell. Um, getting used to it was really just a product of overcoming um, one's senses, a requirement he often had to summon whenever it was time to perform <coughs> for the masses. <coughs> All right, what are they playing? I guess they're playing the shell game. Um, place your bets. Said the um, game master. As he shuffle, as he began shuffling the shells, where, oh, where will we find the pearl today? Each, we're calling him, um, each man in the room shouted his bet while throwing a piece, I say, while throwing a doubloon into the table. Is that two Bs? Oops. Two Ls? I have no idea. All right, we'll figure it out later. Um, into the table. Oh, I gotta find out how much money's worth at this point in time, too. That should be probably something worth researching. Um, see, Jack heard every possible shell mentioned, but it did. Not mean anyone in the room was confident in his choice. The game master <coughs> whipped his hands around as he spoke to the men, and it took all of Jack's concentration not to lose track of where. The, sh the pearl um, or lose concentration, let's see, to not lose track of where he thought he had seen the plural. Okay. Where the shell, or let's see, where the pearl, goodness gracious, stops. Nobody knows. Let's see. Um, according to the locals, this was the game master's um, strategy. Um, even though he essentially said the same every game he liked to change it up when they least expected him to and judging by the look on the other men's faces he had changed it up usually tell us um, follow the pearl to win your squirrel <laughs> now win your girl
said, one of the locals. And tonight, you get different. Said the game master. Jack was, let's see, because Jack had never visited this den nor this town. Um, in all of his 23 years, as Jack in the Resistance Norristown, in all of his 23 years, he could not follow the conversation with any sense of knowledge, of previous knowledge. So he had no complaints over the words the game master spoke. He just watched the shells and watched the eyes of the men who f followed them, hoping to keep up with the majority of uh, keeping let's see focus Ugh. I hope this is uh this sounds good I don't know all right um, because Jack never visited this den before let's see you could not follow the conversation with any sense of previous knowledge. So he had no complaints over the words the game master spoke. He just watched the shells. Let's see about this. And when he lost track, he watched the eyes of the men who followed them, hoping to keep up with the majority focus. Let's see. Once he determined common line of sight, he would attempt to follow it back to the shell that owned the majority. Finally, just as the shells, just as the game master slowed down his shuffling, he um, demanded their final bets. Jack, who wanted to have a decent dinner tonight, finally um, placed his bet. Middle, he shouted as he tossed in his own gold doubloon. The game master stopped and pulled back on the left shell. It was empty. Um, three of the men stepped back with um, a wounded look on their faces. They, one of them, even placed his hand over his heart and cursed. 
I don't typically write the curses. If I if a character curses in my stories, I just say that. I don't typically write them in. So I don't I don't really like uh, seeing that in text. I certainly don't use it myself. So I try to avoid it whenever possible, um, unless it's like really minor and not uh, particularly interesting. Um, otherwise, I make up my own. In fact, maybe uh, maybe I will make up my own. Um, I'll eat a clam for breakfast, he said. Um, in these parts, that passed as a curse. Um, the natives Jack had discovered in just the first 20 minutes of his time here in Willemstad, it's the capital for Karasu, for those who don't know. Um, in just in the first his time here in Willemstad, um, were quite clever in their, in their curses. Um, so clever, in fact, that he often didn't know if they were cursing. Um, may the clam give me a pearl. See, may the clam about. Well, Rob me of my pearl. The game master shrugged. He was already ahead three bets, three three coins, or just three doubloons. Let's say three doubloons. Um, so he didn't seem to care. Okay. Um, Jack held his breath as the game master moved his hand to the middle shell. Is it behind clam number two? He said, um, let's see, seven, hold on, we got 12 people in the room, so that would be seven. Um, right now it is seven. Yeah. Seven other men leaned forward as the game master began to slide the clam backward. These seven, like Jack, had all bet on the same clam. Um, Jack watched each of their faces as the clam moved closer to the edge of the table. Um, some frowning, some sweating. But all of them darting their focus from the clam to the game master's face. The game master, meanwhile, um, grinned at the crowd as he 
gradually raised the back side of the clam. Can it be? He said. He pulled the clam. Let's see, no, he didn't pull. He um, ripped the shell right off the table, revealing not a pearl, but pure uh, musty air. About not pure, but plain, but plain musty air. Seven the seven men shrank back or see hold on six six of the seven men shrank back and and uh, grunted um, the seventh man pounded his fist on the table you cheater he said the game master pressed his fingertips to his chest Ooh, me? Never. He then, let's see, he, hold on, without giving much more than a second to dwell on his own surprise, game master pulled the third shell off the table, revealing the prized pearl. And let's see, without giving much more than a second to dwell on his unsurprised game master pulled the third shell off the table, revealing the prized pearl. Um, he winked at them. Let's see. Meanwhile, the only man in the room not to retreat in his own defeat. Alliteration. Rhyme. Meanwhile, the only man in the room not to retreat uh, how about from his own defeat. Whooped at his victory. Every coin on the table was now his. Let's see, I don't cheat. The game master said, You just have bad coordination. It happens to the best of us. Except him. Let's see. He pointed at, oops, at the winner. Except him. The men nodded. <coughs> they knew. Um, Jack knew too. Um, that was just how the game was played. The harder you try, the quicker you failed. That was, in essence, the nature of the shell game. Um, 
Jack joined the next round now uh, with the intention oops, of shutting off his brain and simply see now with the intention of entering a trance and simply allow the shell to go wherever it may. Um, I wonder, I gotta go back and review this. I think you actually play the shell game after it stops. I don't think you've placed your bets while it's going, so I don't think it's roulette. So, I'll have to remember to go back and review that at some point. Let me put that in my notes. Um, let's see here. Um, hold on, this should be a different paragraph. Okay, regarding, oops. Regarding the shell game, uh, I need I need to find out if bets are placed during the shuffling or after. Okay. All right. All right. So we're at uh, over a thousand. So we're already halfway to our goal. That's good. Um, why don't we take a quick pause here? I think I'm going to go take a quick walk or get a drink or something, and I'll uh, resume the video here shortly. You guys won't notice, but um, I'll probably put like, a little intermission slide in here just to show you that we're taking a break. But we'll uh, we'll come back a little later and, and wrap this scene up. We'll go from there, but uh, I think we're off to a pretty decent start. Um, maybe I'll also look up how to spell doubloon. So it would be a good time to just kind of review my, my notes and or add new notes to see uh, what exactly I could be doing better on this scene. But I'm not going to change a lot because, again, this is all just drafting. Um, and a lot of this will probably be different once it actually makes it to print sometime in the next couple of years. But anyway, all right, uh, I'll be back here in a few minutes or it'll uh, maybe later. But you won't know the difference because just keep watching or you can take a break yourself. All right. Hey, y'all. So it's uh, just a little after 10 o'clock. I'm back to do uh, round two of my NaNoWriMo day one. Um, you may have caught what happened to me right after I finished part one in a previous video that I released. I went and I um, decided I wanted to go for a walk before dinner. So I go to the park and I had this squirrel just kind of stalking me. <laughs> it's like, what is going on? I look behind me, you know, and every few steps, that squirrel is still right there, right behind me. I'm thinking, huh. The squirrel, I think, is uh, going to attack. So I got out my phone and started recording a video, and then the result is what you saw. Um, that was interesting. I think um, I kind of hope you guys got to watch that. It was uh, kind of a, just a funny thing. But I hadn't actually been to that park in a while, so it's kind of nice to go back. It's a park that's just up the street from my house, and um, used to go there a lot more often. Like these days, I go to the beach a bit more often. Um, I may do a video from there at some point before this whole thing's over. Not that you need to see it because it's a beach, but um, I'm thinking in the spirit of the theme, we might. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so we're back, and um, you know, NaNoWriMo day one is still good for another uh, hour and 15 minutes. So we're going to try to get to our goal. Um, we're close to it. We want to at least break 1,600, uh, 67, even though 2,000 is our ultimate goal. Um, if I go a little over midnight, I typically count my days um up to like 6 a.m the next day so if i go over midnight it's still going to be day one as far as i'm concerned so that said let's go ahead and pick up um i want to make another couple notes here too that i uh 
I did figure out how to spell doubloon. Um, it's actually I was it's D O U B L O O N, but it doesn't matter because in Karasu, the um, the currency is up really up until just 2002, right? I don't know. But anyway, the currency is called the Dutch Gilder. So it's uh, not unlike our American dollar, where you've got uh, 100 cents to a Gilder. And I actually had, I don't know if, if I still have the page pulled up, but um, I have, uh, let's see, da, da, da. just show you real quick. I have this note here. This is what I wrote down. Again, you can pause it, but um, if you look up Dutch Gilder at Wikipedia, you can kind of get a sense of what that is. So that's what we're working on as far as money. So I'm assuming they probably have more than a few Gilders on them because I think they're not really too unlike our, our dollars. So that said, we will, shall continue. Um, I'm going to figure out, let's see, I think... So what I wanted to do, I don't want to spend a whole lot more time on the gambling den because we're already over a thousand words, and it's best not to you know belabor a scene for longer than we need to. It's probably going to end up being this whole first chapter will probably end up being in the den because I just think it's getting to be about that length where that would work out. Um, but again, I'm probably not going to label chapters in the NaNoWriMo edition. Uh, I'll I'll do that when I actually go and assemble the thing and, and I don't think I'm gonna finish the story before day 30 if, if I do that'd be pretty awesome but I'm not expecting to fin actually finish the story um, but when I do eventually finish it I mean it's, I'm gonna be finishing it under the actual novel structure with chapters and everything so I'll figure out where everything goes at that point but all right enough talking let's see um, so Jack joined the next round now with the intention of entering a trance and simply allow the shot to go where it may. Um, how would he allow? That's, he doesn't have control over that. And simply follow the shell as it goes. Wherever it may. Okay. Let's see. Once again, the game master um, went through his spiel. Um, spiel. Spiel. Alright, so we won't say spiel. Um, Alright, so once again, Game Master went through his... You know what, let's just do it anyway. Let's maybe... There's a dictionary we can use here. Um, again, these are the things I would do more if I weren't recording, but I want to try to streamline the priority process as much as I can so it's not boring ever. And to stop and check for a spell check can't be the most exciting thing in the world, but I think at this point it needs to be done... If I can remember, okay, I think I have to go ahead and go in my tool spelling. Don't care about that. I just want to go check the one I'm trying to spell. Oops, here, let's see this. Let's do spelling. Nope, I'm not going to do that. Okay. That's really that's all it is. It's not a different way to spell it. Mm. All right, I guess we're gonna do that. Um, spiel. Okay. Fun fact: I think that's the German word for play. Just FYI. All right, um, or for sport rather. Uh, once again, the game master went through a spiel. Let's see. Moving each shell around the table faster than the I can follow, but not so fast that he would make a mistake. Um as the 
as his hands moved, his mouth also moved, um, doing everything it could to distract the men as they, as they watched and forgot where the pearl may actually be. Um, but Jack was not falling for the trick this time. Now, now that he knew what the game master's uh, technique was, he watched only the shells, not the game master, nor the men in the room with him. Once the game master stopped movement, Jack. I'm kind of. I'm wondering. You know what? Yeah. Okay. Jack smiled because he knew exactly where the pearl was. It was now on the left. Let's see. The game master started with the right shell. Um, this time, Jack figured it was also part of the game to reveal the empty shells before revealing the actual location. Um, And as he expected, the right shell was empty. And because the right shell was empty, and because he was certain the left shell was not, He assumed that the game master would pull, would reveal the emptiness of the middle shell next. And that's exactly what the man did. Middle shell came up, four men in the four of the players groaned as they discovered they were wrong, and the game master finished the round by revealing the pearl under the shell on the left. Jack raised his fist and whooped. He had won the round. The game master 
Um, gave him a curious eye. What are you excited about? The game master asked. Let's see what he said. You didn't place any bets this round. Jack was about to protest when he realized that he was in such deep focus that he had, in fact, forgotten to call out his guests. It was all in his mind. Or the right answer is all in his mind. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so I'm still I'm wondering if maybe I want to do like a um let me go back to my see if I update this. Um or I can make up my own version of the game where the players play form of roulette. Um, in that they get double the money. Let's see if they guess correctly before the shells stop. Okay, so maybe what it, what what it'll be is yeah. No, I don't know how that would work as far as how they would actually double a bet. I'd have to work that out too. Um, but I think that's how they'll play this game. Maybe it'll be like a carousel special or something. Or maybe it's special for the den. I don't need to necessarily research this one. If I um, make it about that. Alright. We'll see. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So we're getting close to the goal here. We're in green now. It's cool. We're almost at 1,400. So we only got, uh, we just need just 305 more words to make today's uh, NaNoWriMo goal and another 600 plus to get to our stated goal, which we can do. Game Master gave him the career sign. What are you excited about? The Game Master said you didn't place any bets this round. Or... And let's see. And he realized he would have to do better for the next round. At least he didn't lose any money this time. All right. Um, the next round, Jack tossed in. Let's see. Ten. Let's see. The next round, yeah, Jack tossed in a single. Uh, what do we call those things? Uh, gilder. Tossed in a single gilder. Tossed in a single gilder. Um, into the bedding pile. Um, <coughs> so next project testing it's so we'll get rid of them. And applied his same technique as before. Um, next toss a single guild around the pile. 
this time. However, he listened more carefully to the game masters. Request for bets. Um, according to Kiru, or is it Kiru? Curacao. Oh, I used to this. Special rules. There we go. I'll probably sneak that in, in sooner in the uh, documents at some point in the future. For now, we're just kind of thumbing our way in the dark here to figure out where we're going. According to Curacao, special rules. Um, Jack can place his bet earlier and potentially earn double his take. Um, I guess his take would be, I don't even know. I gotta figure that math out. Um, places bad earlier and potentially earn double his take, but he was still in experiment patient stage and did not want to um, sully his chances at a larger score by throwing it all in now. Mm, no. By calling early and losing it all. Yep. He figured he could try that strategy once he was certain he had a strategy. For now, he waited until the Game Master's final call. Last call said the Game Master. Let's see, find the pearl to get. Your girl. It, the old tried and true, according if what the, lo the locals had said is true, or maybe it was true. The old tried and true. Um, yeah, let's see. Not a square, I'll just say phrase. Come up with a better term later. <clears throat> Alright, let's call it to the game master. Find the pearl to get your girl. The old tried and true. Let's see. Um, Jack. Placed his bet on the right shell. Winner! Said the game master as he pulled back the right shell. Jack and three other men took um, their share, took their shares up the betting pool. Okay. Um, so Jack understood how to play and now oh, was the time to score big. So 
Jack finally understood how to play. I played a win. And now it's time for him to score big. As the game master warmed up the crowd, the um, daredevils tossed their bets in early. Each one putting his stake on the middle shell. It was the one shell that had yet to produce the pearl. And they were, and six of the men were convinced that it was time. Um, let's see. It was um, that it was overdue. Jack shook his head at the logic. Even in a game of chance, there was no proof that the middle shell would ever produce the pearl. It all came down to the game master's pattern. And the game master never actually stopped or never actually moved the pearl into the middle section. Based on his um, observation, at least of the last two rounds, look, I made the little green dot, little green block go green. We're finally at the, uh, yep, yeah, anyway, he can read. All right, based on his observation of the, um, of at least the last two rounds. The let's see. Um, Jack was certain that the game master had an aversion the middle spot. Um, yes, he would move shells into the middle spot, but only the one that did not contain the pearl. The pearl would instead um, follow the large trajectory um, from one side to the other and back again. It, it would sometimes end up in the same place where it had started, but it, um, but even if it ended in the opposite place, it would always be one or the other, never the middle. So these six guys were stupid. All right. Um, 
he figured he could double his bet um, if he wanted to play the 50 50 odds and that was certainly um, on the table as his coin flipping and guessing skills were um, above 50%. Um, successful. I figured he could double his, his his bet if he wanted to play the 50 odds. And that was certainly on the table as his coin flipping and guessing skills were about 50% successful. But he didn't want to risk it because the money he had on him was the only money he had to his name. And he still needed to eat some dinner and pay for his lodging tonight. Um, losing the game would mean going hungry on the street. He did not want that to happen. So he waited until the game master called for, um, demanded last call. The shelves moved quickly and Jack um, entered his trance to shut off all distraction and as he expected the shell which the game master had shown going into or going under the left shell as it see as it had always entered Ugh. hold up the shell has moved quickly and jack entered his trance to shut off and as he expected the shell which the game master had shown going under the left shell as it had each round before there we go um, shifted from left to right and back again as the um, middle shell traded places with the opposite. Empty shell. Um, Let's see, did he place his bet earlier? To place his bet. Okay. Okay. As the shell slowed down. Jack tossed in ten of his guilders. Or a handful of guilders. And uh,
and waited for the Game Master's call. Once the shells stopped, Jack placed his bet on the right. Um, once the shell stopped, Jack placed. The game master, as predicted, began his presentation, or his reveal presentation with the left shell, which was, of course, empty. Jack smiled as he watched six men, no, five men, sorry, five men clutch their stomachs or their chest and retreated from the table, cursing their ill luck and not their ill skill. Um, Jack Smiley's watched five men clutch their stomachs or their chest and retreat from the, um, it was now between him and the other six. Do I have, I see, da, da, da. Hmm. Oh, that was the last round, right? Hold on. Oh, no, okay, so that was... They, they called it before it stopped, so they put... What do they put their bets on? On the middle, right? Okay. All right, I just want to make sure my math is right. Okay, because there's 12 people in the room. I just got to make sure I'm not miscounting. All right, it's now between him and the other six. Um, the ones who stupidly bet early on the middle. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, Jack felt his chest puff out a bit. As he watched the game master move toward the middle shell. Um, again, you see, um, the presentation always revealed the second empty before the um, before the actual pearl, never before it did, the actual pearl, and as the game master pulled back the shell to reveal its empty, it's empty, whoops, to reveal its pearl. What? Jack took a step back. That was impossible. How could it be that the middle shell had the pearl this time? It never had the pearl. He didn't, you know, he, he had watched the game master's hands carefully and 
just as they always had. They had never moved the, the pearl into the middle position. How in the world did the pearl get there? Cheater! Jack yelled at the game master. It, the pearl is supposed to be under the right shell. The game master looked at him and raised his eyebrow. Without a word, he slid his hand to the right shell and lifted it off the table to reveal what was in fact nothing at all. But how? The game master smiled. Never assume you know how to play this game, son. Then he said. Actually, I don't even need that tag. We know he's talking. Um. The six lucky ones, meanwhile, swept their hands across the table and collected their winnings. Let's see, um, four of them. Um, let's see, saluted the game master, then headed for the door, satisfied, now, um, nah, they're not going to leave. The six lucky ones, email you know, swept their hands across the table and collected their winnings. Jack collected nothing. He retreated to the back of the room to take inventory of his remaining coins. His pocket jingled as he walked, which was good to hear, but it was also much lighter than when he had walked in, which was, um, not bad, which was unsatisfactory. He dug his hand into his pocket and clasped every coin, uh, every, every gilder he could find. He frowned as he realized he had just five remaining. At least I can eat tonight, he said, but he was likely not to sleep in a comfortable room as the best rooms um, as he would need six guilders sleep in a, in a nice room. He 
he glanced at the table the game master was taking the next round of bets if he played just one more round he could earn back the extra gilder and have a good night's sleep um, then he would call it quits for the evening um, with five more or see with four more gilders to spare he thought it would be a safe bet he returned to the table and bet on the middle shell when the placing just one gilder on the table let's see they turn the table let's see on the pile um, the pearl appeared under the right shell this time Jack left the den before he could cause himself more damage. Actually, Jack clearly didn't understand the shell game quite as well as he had assumed. He left the day before he can call. So he left the day and caused himself any more damage tonight. Okay. All right, I think we're good there. Um, we're going to put a, the pound keys to show that um, we're ending the scene. So we have a, a little over 2,400 word scene. That's not bad. Um, so what we're going to do now, this is all I'm going to do for today. So I'm going to go ahead and record my progress. 2414 is our actual end number. So actual word count is 2414. Uh, words, and then that's what we have for the month total so far. So what we'll do tomorrow is whatever I do on day two, um, we'll add it to 2414. Now I don't think I have a calculator on Scrivener, I don't believe. Um, the scratch pad um, yeah I don't see any calculators on here I wonder why they never included a calculator what's my options do I have any yeah I don't see any calculators on here okay anyway so um, that's that we'll go ahead and update our NaNoWriMo page there's our doubloons all right um, so we are going to I'm not sure if I click on this or do I okay whoops right, details see the thing is this um oh wait is this where I'm going I'm not sure this is um this had a different format last time I, I did this uh it was a lot easier to track my word count I don't fully know how to do that just yet. Um, profile, do I do that here? Uh, do, do, do. So this is my badge page. I don't have anything yet because I'm still trying to figure out how to add my, I don't think, is this adding a project? 
Oh, no, that's show more options. Um, I'm not going to do any of that. It's all cheesy. So we'll say 24 or 14. Take progress. Okay. What's this? All right, I guess it's more frivolous stuff. All right, so we're at 24.14 for the for 2019, and we're now up to 38,000 plus for my entire series, so good. All right, so that's uh, day one of NaNoWriMo. Uh, it's just now getting to be about 11 o'clock, and uh, we're still an hour left of the day, but that's all I'm going to do. Um, I will do another one for sure tomorrow, probably... I don't know for what my goal will be yet. I think we'll just keep doing 2000s. I think that's a good goal for now. During the weeks, I'll probably have smaller goals because I'm typically a little bit more tired during the week. Um, but we're good so far. Uh, da, 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 da. Do I guess, do I give myself badges? I don't know. Um, so yeah, so if you like the video, if you like the story, if you just like anything about this, go ahead and give me a, a like uh, or a comment, either one. Just you know, show me that you're engaging a bit with the the whole process, just so I, I know that this is worth my time and yours. Um, and again, if you like the story, please give your suggestions. Tell me what you want to see happen. Um, if you see a mistake in my logic, please point that out. Uh, be involved. You know, you don't need to just be quiet and watch. You can shape the course of uh, of the story. Uh, probably not the plot, because the plot's already fixed in my head, but um, just some of the details. Um, if you have ideas you want to see or something you want to call me out on, please, by all means, do so. Um, hopefully you stay with it till the end. Um, even if you watch this video well out of uh, NaNoWriMo range, even if you watch this after I finish the draft, um, it's still good to comment because I'll still read it. And if I like your suggestions, it, it might be that I'll end up making uh, that change in the revision if it's something I think is um, useful. Um, again, I, I just you know, I want to say that um, if you catch any inconsistencies, anything that doesn't logically add up, that's the kind of stuff I'm really looking forward to hearing. Um, if you don't like the character, I mean, be honest. Tell me the character sucks, but you know, give me good criticism why. Because um, I don't want to make any massive changes if it's just subjective. But if it's an actual flaw then i need to know that if you see something that i don't so anyway um we'll be up back tomorrow uh i'm gonna my plan is to post each episode up about one o'clock the following day so day one will appear on november 2nd day two will appear on november 3rd and so on um, i might be off a bit but uh, i just want to remind you guys that i'm not going to be doing much editing just because the amount of time required will be extensive and and I, uh, I don't really have that kind of time to both do NaNoWriMo and edit the videos to uh, you know, a satisfactory lack of, of clicks and ums and things. So um, just hope that's fine. Anyway, all right, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.